some stories are so astonishing that they are unbelievable. When Misha Difonsica, I'm sorry for the pronunciation, was seven years old, her parents were arrested by Nazis. She was told that they had been deported and she was put in household with a Catholic family in Belgium. And she said that she felt alienated there. She said she felt like they didn't love her. They hated her and they called her worthless. At that point in time, she saw a map of Europe and saw that Germany isn't too far away from Belgium because she was seven years old. Looking back, she said that was incredibly naive because when she actually did end up running away, she would walk for miles and miles for months and months on end. Misha decided that she was going to walk to Germany, so she brought along a knife, a compass, and some a little bit of food and water. She was alone in the woods. This was an incredibly traumatic experience for her, not only because of the freezing temperatures, having to steal food and going hungry, but it was seeing in every single town there was war and devastation, and she had to see so many dead bodies. This was an incredibly traumatic experience for her, not just because of what was going on in these towns, but because she was alone in the wilderness. One day she was caught stealing food from a farmer, so she ran as fast as she could for her life. When she finally thinks she got far enough, she stops and she kind of feels like something is watching her. She looks around and there's a wolf. Misha claims that she gave this wolf a piece of food and they ended up becoming friends and in no time they were walking side by side. This is an incredibly heartwarming story because it tells the story of a survivor, a girl who is being saved by this pack of wolves. She describes how the wolf was generous to her and treated her like her mother. After a time, it was a pack of wolves and she was forced to have submissive behavior because she was obviously not the alpha. Together, they would walk many miles every day towards Belgium. At one point, she used her knife to kill a German soldier. After he attacked and murdered a woman, Misha made it to the Warsaw Ghetto and was able to sneak in and out multiple times. She traveled through countries like Poland, Ukraine, and Italy before making her way back to Belgium at the end of the war. She kept saying to herself that if they are alive and wondering where I am and there's a chance that I can get back to them, I'm going to try. And that's what kept her going. Years later, she lives in the United States and talks about her story for the first time in a synagogue. It was said that her story was so astonishing to everyone in the room that you could hear a pin drop. Misha originally didn't want to write a story about her experiences, but her family said you need to do this because of future generations. It is theorized that the reason why Misha did decide to write her story when she did was because she came to America dreaming of the American dream, however, was struggling to make ends meet. Her husband didn't work, and that's when she came up with her story. This story catches the eye of a publisher. Her publisher's name was Jane Daniel, and this is important because she later ends up suing her and basically ruining her entire reputation, which kind of uncovers the secret. She was going to be on open and it was said that Disney wanted to sign with her. Her contract with Disney fell through and she ended up not going on Oprah due to complications with just disagreements that she had about like the flight. But she was supposed to have a segment in the interview where she would meet with wolves again. And she did. And when she went, she was the only one who went inside. Even the cameraman was too scared. And when she went inside, everything seemed fine for a moment before the wolf put his paw on her and proceeded to put her entire head in its mouth mouth. For some reason, the book at this point wasn't really getting a whole bunch of traction and Misha actually ended up suing her publisher for breach of contract and misrepresentation. In the lawsuit, she claimed that her publisher had not properly promoted her book and had failed to fulfill certain contractual obligations related to the book's publication and distribution. Misha alleged that the publisher had not provided her with adequate support to market the book and had not paid her the royalties that she believed that she was owed. At this point, Misha chickened out of going on Oprah, which was very strange. Her family couldn't even get in contact with her. It was ordered that $22.5 million would be paid back to Misha. This is partly due to because of how much love that the courtroom had for her. I mean, this is an incredible survivor. There's no point in questioning it. Like, it's incredibly disrespectful to question someone who has gone through this much. You have survived potentially one of the worst things that ever happened in history. This was an incredibly messy trial. Her publisher was completely ripped to shreds in the way that no one wanted to work with her anymore. She was diagnosed with PTSD. Before the trial, Jane Daniel did show this story to historians and professionals, and some of them came back and said that this is impossible. This is a fabricated story. But she 
went on with publishing and later admitted that it was partly greed that made her so prone to believe this story. Journalists ended up finding that Misha used a different name for herself in the French version of her book and the English version. Rather, in the French version, her name was Monique Delval. At this point, the book was completely popular. There was literally a movie made about it. Her book was published in 20 different languages. After examining deportation lists, it was found that her parents were never married. It was very strange because there were so many discrepancies, such as Misha claimed that she didn't have a maiden name. However, there are these documents that have her handwriting in it where she clearly knows things that she said that she didn't know. This at least suggests that she's exaggerating how much she doesn't know, but that begs the question, how much is she actually not telling us? It's incredibly disrespectful to even question someone who has been through so much. Maybe she is exaggerating a little bit, but you cannot question it still, her story is valid. Maybe she was undocumented, maybe she was a hidden Jewish child, there's so many scenarios that could be possible. So her publisher and journalists went back to Misha's hometown to do some investigating. If she wasn't Jewish, then maybe she was Catholic, so they went around to all of the different Catholic churches to figure out if she was registered to be baptized there. They went through a few churches before trying one that they found out had actually been burned down. This was very upsetting because this could be the missing link that ties everything together. They were actually able to find these documents in the town. Lo and behold, Monique Delval's name is on there. So she was Catholic. As they dug further and further, they were able to find out that she was registered in school. They found her documents to expose that her name was not given to her after she was given to a new family, but she was born with this name. But by this time, it was a best-selling book. There were 20 different languages. There was a literal movie made about it. Misha was getting so much attention for this. She would go on different talk shows and made a living out of this. When all of this was discovered, Misha had to come forward and explain her side of the story. She explained how she endured abuse in her own home and she almost went into a maladaptive reality where this was true. And she said when she was coming up with her story and stuff, she was like, did this actually happen or was it more of just a dream? Her entire story of claiming to survive the Holocaust by living with wolves was a hoax. She expressed regret for deceiving readers and expressed that she had written the book as a form of therapy to express her emotions. This was incredibly devastating to so many people, but a mostly Holocaust survivors. They said that they were devastated not only for themselves, and what they had endured, but for the children who didn't make it out. People said maybe she was just so traumatized that she couldn't think straight. It's possible that Misha wanted people to feel sympathy for her because she did go through a lot in her childhood. Her parents were murdered for fighting against the Nazi party. Faking this is a way of making your pain count and mean something. Sympathy and attention is very important to some people. Do you think it's possible I could be being too hard on her? Is it possible that she is dealing with with something like a maladaptive daydreaming or a dissociation from self. I know this might be a little bit tricky to understand considering she also coincidentally made a lot of money off of it. And many people are able to tell the difference between their maladaptive reality or the real world, but definitely let me know in the comments if you deal with dissociation or maladaptive daydreaming. Maladaptive daydreaming is a mental health issue where a person daydreams excessively, sometimes for hours at a time. This can happen as a way for a child to cope with the things going on around them, literally escaping into a reality inside their head that later becomes maladaptive later in life. Maladaptive means that this type of daydreaming is an unhealthy or negative attempt to cope or adapt to a problem. People who do this tend to lose themselves in extremely vivid and detailed daydreams. Research has also shown that this kind of daydream might be compulsive. That means it's difficult, if not impossible, to control when you're doing it. This is debatably the worst thing to ever happen in history and she fabricated and gained attention from it. What can be learned from this is that in history, questioning some things could actually save what is written in history. If it was never exposed that Misha was lying about this, this would have just gone down in history as the truth. It's very difficult for us as humans because for a lot of us, it is so natural and instinctive to believe people when they're telling you these things. How could you possibly lie about such a fantastical story and surviving this time in history where there are real survivors? Misha said, it's not the true reality, but it's my reality. There are times when I find it difficult to differentiate between reality and my inner world. She earned millions off of her lies. For what it might be worth to anyone, Misha
Aisha did seem genuinely sorry. I don't know, that's hard for me to believe because it's like, weren't you sorry though when you were going on all these talk shows? Did it just not occur to you then? It is very tragic to consider that Misha is not the only person who has lied about being a Holocaust survivor. There was a Pennsylvania man who lied about being in Auschwitz. Fragments was another Holocaust memoir that was exposed as fraudulent in 1998. What do you guys think? Um, I guess because of the situation, I'm more prone to be like, no, you knew exactly what you were doing. However, I'm not in her shoes, so I can't really say. Also, it's not really my place to forgive her, so I will definitely leave that up to you guys. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, turn the bell on if you're feeling risky, and comment below. Thank you so much. It helps with the algorithm. Thank you so much to each and every one of my members, and to everyone, have a good day, night, whatever the case may be, and peace out. Thank you.